video features than anyone in the USA. That's just kind of a fact. And, and I've seen a lot of people's films, and I like some of them. I hate most of the video features. And I really think Hell's Highway is the best video feature in this micro-budget round. It just delivers it. And, and if you're like an 18 to 50-year-old male that likes horror or stuff like that, we had good acting on it, great special effects with Joe Castro. We had a great uh, little mini crew with Brian and Gina and Brian's brother. It was six days of hell. We were working, I guess, about an hour and a half north of Los Angeles out in the Mojave Desert, uh, right in you know, the middle of the summertime when it's as hot as it can get. And it was averaging maybe 110, 115. It was, it was shot where uh, the movie Duel was shot, if anybody remembers that movie. Let me tell you something about Ron, Jeremy. He is the greatest guy. He's a good actor, and, you know, he's known for his, let's say, over 21 type films. But if you if you go and dig the films he did in the 80s that he acted in, very, one of the best in that field acting, um, he's funny. He's really funny. And working with him on Hell's Highway, very nice, very personal guy. The two leads that are sitting in back of the car, and they're, they're really like kind of heavy for each other. They did a great job in the movie. I had to think, am I the devil or am I a hunter? Mine seems to be the devil. And I figured I just entered the body, you see, so I could really be the devil. So you thought you were really the devil in this movie. You, what, you weren't, it wasn't like, a, there was no scientific explanation for it. Well, I figured that was the bodies I used. It was easier to use the clone bodies, you know. They weren't even infiltrated with the spirit. Oh, okay. See my imagination. I see that. Stevie Dollar, excellent. She just had the look. Her eyes were great. She's really, uh, she's, it was a movie made for her almost. Yeah, if she sold her soul to the devil at the turn of the century, how the hell has she been on the highway killing people unless she's been entering bodies? Can you analyze this movie a little closer, a little more than I am? I don't know who you could cast that would be better for the part. Movies like The Exorcist and The Omen, they made these movies about the devil, and, and these bad things happen when they made these movies, you know, like... Prince oh, yeah. So, do you think, like, when you when you make a movie about the devil, bad things can happen? It could have. Because there's a lot of bad things that happen during making this movie, to both me and the director. The director actually burned himself. Myself and the director, we went out, um, I guess, about an hour north of Edwards Air Force Base. To shoot uh, an explosion, you know, a miniature set uh, with an explosion. As you're watching that point, I want you to think that behind that footage, behind that camera, is the director charred and barbecued and not on purpose. The hair on his head melted down. Um, and he did. He looked like he had been in the sun for six days straight, but it had only been 20 seconds or so. We didn't take him to the hospital first because he was too stubborn to yes. go to the hospital, so he comes to my house and soaks in my bathtub for, what, four hours? Yes. Finally. Saying that it was just, oh, it just feels like a bad sunburn, that's all. Finally, four hours later, he comes out blistered. Major blisters. I've never seen blisters like this in my life. Never. It seems to be a cursed movie. I get a phone call from Jeff saying that he's all burned up. He was supposed to come and shoot a John Woo interview, get to meet the director of Mission Impossible. And he can't do it because he's scarred everywhere and got bandages, so he kind of missed out on that one. I've been with Jeff before when he's uh, doing footage. And I felt flames coming very close to me.
Definitely, it's a county hospital. It's like anything you might see on uh, the Learning Channel. You know, the, Except real the guy stuff. decides to uh, pee all over the hospital floor. You know, a lot of homeless people. In this they were very good to them. They were very, very, nice, very good. Very He stayed for about four days. The producer himself, uh, David Sterling, slipped and fell and broke his wrist. I fell on the floor at my house. They had to stick pipes in there to keep it straight. I had a metal-like pipe holding my wrist so I won't bend it, and now it doesn't bend. I just got it out a week ago. I can't do this. I can't bend. I can't but I'm working on it. You know, the doctor wants me to do this. Uh, if you see our next movie, at the end of that, when I do the making of it, I'll show you this so I can bend it. What else bad happened during the making of this thing? Um, we were messing with Satan in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> This is after we finished the movie, I got a virus and ended up in the hospital. I got really sick. I couldn't breathe. My heart rate was up to like 120 beats per minute. That's two people I had to take to the hospital. Fortunately, I have not gotten any serious injuries. I have scars, though, like from that fall, the fall with the, the priest. I really felt death. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 